Welcome everyone to the HAL podcast where we feature guests from various backgrounds with captivating stories to tell. And our goal is to bring people together by sharing diverse perspectives and experiences while also empowering and amplifying underrepresented voices to inspire positive change in a world. And if you haven't already, please subscribe to our YouTube channel at Howling Gale Entertainment. And please give us a rating on Spotify at the HAL podcast if you haven't already. That would mean so much to us. And I'm your host today, Juan Raimundo Ramos, and our next guest for today is Natalie Shabazian, who's a professional hair braider, who's also a content creator known as Every Little Strand, who specializes in hair braiding tutorials that's being shown on TikTok, Instagram, YouTube, and so on. And we're so excited to talk about Natalie's journey, as well as her perspective as well on social media and its effect on people's mental health. So without further ado, please welcome Natalie Shabazian or Every Little Strand. Thank you for being here, Natalie. It's good to be here. Thank you so much for having me. Absolutely. And uh, I remember just working on that one video with you and it got pretty much a decent amount of views. So if you haven't seen it already, please check out the YouTube channel Every Little Strand for more braiding, hair braiding tutorials over there. But uh, excited to have you here and to hear more about your perspective. Um, But first and foremost, for people who don't know much about you, just kindly introduce yourself and also your background too. Hi, how are you? My name is Natalie, uh, Natalie Shabazi. So I've been a hair braider for five years um, and I have been really enjoying being able to create such wonderful styles on my clients and creating really good content that inspires other people to make uh, cool braid styles as well. So it's been such a great journey. Absolutely. And for people who actually don't know, because... Because I remember I, I just discovered like hair braiding like a couple of years ago. I didn't even know what hair braiding means, right? So for people who don't know what hair braiding is, like what is it? So hair braiding is just basically is a, a technique on a hairstyle. And it's really uh, all it is is just like, I'm so sorry, there's like a train passing by. So if you guys hear that, my apologies. Uh, but essentially, it's just like a, a method of styling a hair that you can keep for a, a period of time. And it's really good because it's a, it can be a protective style. It's great to keep it in for a very long time so your hair doesn't get messed up. And um, yeah, and also makes a lot of people feel really beautiful. So yeah. And does it work on all types of hair? Does it have to be like long hair, short hair or or what? So it works on all types of hair. Um, and and then if you don't even have that, any like a lot of people, some people don't have that much hair. You can always add extensions. Um, and I would say kinky hair is always the best hair. But like I said, it works on all types of hair. So, yeah. Gotcha. That makes sense because my hair is really short. So I, I don't know if I'll be able to braid or like add certain things to it, but I've definitely tried to, uh, interested to try it in the, in the future at some point. I don't know when, <laughs> but I'm down to see myself, um, in that regard. So I was, I'm curious, like, how did everything begin? How did you start out as a hair braider? So I started off doing hair braiding when I was really young. I was in middle school. I saw another girl in the library braid another girl's hair. And- it's like, oh my God, I think I could do that too. So I had a Barbie doll at home and then I was like practicing it uh, on the Barbie doll when I was watching movies. And that's kind of like how it got it kind of got started. And then from there I was doing it on friends and then classmates as I got like older. And um, yeah, it was, it was like more of a hobby and for fun. Yeah. And did you take any like formal education? Did you go to school for this, like to further enhance your skills or like maybe go to tutorials or like how did you become um, really good at what you do? So, um, like I said, at first it was just for fun. And then, um, I think I wanted to take it seriously cause I braided my hair in college and my mom's son, she was like, Oh my God, why don't you just do this as a business? And I was like, mom, that's such a great idea. Cause I've always wanted to have my own business. I just didn't know what. And when she said that, I was like, I really do enjoy braiding hair. I really do like how people feel after they get their hair done. 
And um, so since like after that happened, um, I took it very seriously. So I dropped out of college or I went to Glendale Community College. I dropped out of Glendale Community College. I went to cosmetology school for a year um, and it was the Pasadena Community College. They have a program there for a year. Uh, so I was there early morning till like, I think like five or six every day. And um, during that process, I was also starting to take clients and I was starting my social media and that's how I started getting clients from that as well. Absolutely. Yeah. I mean, uh, it's great to have clients from different sources, right? Um, speaking of like, tell us about your business. Uh, tell us about also like um, how you started getting into the business, also getting your clients. You mentioned about the social media. Um, like, how did it start? When did it start? Do you have like a certain office that you have, etc.? cetera? Yeah. Um, so basically how I started, right? I was going to cosmetology school. And then at the same time, I was posting on social media at first, like I didn't even have clients. So my first goal was like, how do I get my clients? So I would message like influencers, um, or like girls that had like a, a platform of like a thousand plus followers. And that was just enough for me to be like, okay, like I messaged them. Hey, do you want to get free braids? If you can post me. And, um, uh, some, a lot of them said no. And then I got some good ones that said yes. And that kind of picked up on like me getting some clients because their friends or the, whoever they're following sees me doing their hair. And then that kind of like makes them feel, you know, they can trust me or like feel comfortable to get their hair done by me. So that's kind of how I first started to get my clientele was messaging these like, in like girls that had a lot of like followers. Um, and then consistently posting on social media, I had my Instagram, then I had my TikTok, um, and now I'm just starting to get into YouTube as well. So, uh, I'm very lucky now I have a good clientele base. A lot of my clientele actually, cause of where I live, I have a, it's more of like an Armenian community. And, um, I think like some of my clients had posted me on like, uh, their groups, Armenian moms group, I believe. So I, a lot, most of my clientele, they're more of like moms and kids. Um, and of course I have like young people too. A lot of them go to festivals. That's why you can like have so much colors and, and I do have a shop too. Um, this was like my dad's printing shop that I'm like, just like, I have like a small little room that I'm doing. Um, and like braiding the hair in like the small little room, but before I used to do it at my home. So for the first four years of me doing braiding, I was doing it out of my home. And then, um, I'm lucky enough to have like my own space and it looks, it feels more professional and, uh, yeah. So that's where we're at. There you go. Absolutely. Uh, and congratulations uh, on that. And also I wanted to mention about the clientele because I feel like when people start a business, at least from scratch, there's so much marketing that needs to be involved, whether it's social media or through word of mouth, right? It's, it takes a while to have that initial clientele. Like how do people, how can people get interested in my business? Like what, like what stands out in my business that's not standing out in other businesses? So talk a little bit about, I guess the challenges, uh, or yeah, the challenges of getting the initial clientele. Did you go through like word of mouth first or or mostly like social media, et cetera? Like how did it come about? So basically, um, well, you made some good points. So I feel like I stand out more than like some other braiders because I have, I like provide a lot of like hair here. Like, so when my clients come, I have the hair. Whereas like a lot of the hair braiders like in LA, um, you have to like bring your own extensions and a lot of people, some people don't even know how to like, you know, what kind of hair, hair extensions to even get, or like, uh, they don't even know where to begin, what type of hair. So, um, at least when they come to me, I have everything, you know, and then also I'm very friendly. I try to be <laughs> always like, you know, um, uh, always, uh, try to, accommodate whatever they want, whatever they're asking for. I try to make sure having a good consultation, making sure if they're like, do they like it? How do you feel? Um, giving good customer service, right? Um, uh, being always friendly, um, providing all the hair for them. And I tell them if there's anything wrong with the hair, you can always come back to me and like, I can always like fix it. You know, I always try to be like, 
uh, I, I want them to come and have like a good experience when they come here, right? Compared to like if they go to someone else. I initially was a, a, a bit of both. It was like word of mouth and like me posting on social media um, with the that whole influencer, like those like girls with a lot of followers. Um, but I think stronger was definitely word of mouth because when, once I started doing like a few moms, then like, I think they, like it spread, the word had spread <laughs> and, um, at least with that Facebook group, cause that really was like, I got a lot of clients from just like them telling other people. And yeah, I think the, the strongest for sure is word of mouth because it's like their friends, their close friends and like family and whatever. So if I do one person, it's like I'm doing their whole family or like their friends. So it's like, it's really good. I, I would say like, that is how at least like the clientele that I have now, that's like, like it's so strong. The, for just word of mouth. And I still continue to have like clients with word of mouth, like, Oh, my friend came to you this time. She said she raves about you or whatever. So, um, that's, yeah, I think that's like the best, how I, how I have the clientele that I have now is because of word of mouth. That's amazing. And I, I definitely wish uh, the best uh, for you because I think that word of mouth is so important because it's more personable, right? Like whenever you're reaching out to clients and you're getting new clients and you talk to them, you provide, like you mentioned, about good customer service, right? And then they're like, oh, I actually like like this business a lot. Maybe I'll come back to it like at some point. And, you know, and then I guess the, the recurring customers are... Um, super beneficial. So that's amazing. What are your goals for, I, I guess, your hair braiding career um, as far as maybe your business or um, and so on? Because I know that you also do social media, but you also have your, your own office. Um, do you per, do you want to pursue this basically um, for um, for a while or are you planning on different ventures and so on? Like what are your goals for um, hair braiding? So, um, it's, what's really great about having your own business is like, you can do like the sky is the limit and you can do like anything with just like your business. Right. So, um, I honestly, I'm so open to so many things. Like I'm like for me right now, I'm still continuing to do hair braiding, but I definitely am trying to explore more on YouTube. I get a lot of like comments and messages on like how to like do braiding, um, and like, I think that I want to like get into maybe like teaching more and teaching on like YouTube because I think it's a good platform that will reach like anybody around the world that would, I, in my opinion, hair braiding is a little bit of a hard skill to learn. And um, I don't think a lot of people know how to do that. Like there's not that many hair braiders compared to like hairstylists or like hair colorists or like, you know, hair cutters. So um, I definitely want to get into like the world of YouTube and like teaching and then also, um, also sell products online, which I'm selling like hair extensions to. Um, so, uh, yeah, I'm, I'm trying to get into that too. And there's just like so many things that I can get into with just like my business too. Like, like I said, I can just do teaching for classes of groups, for example, or I could do like, um, like I said, for like YouTube, selling products online, selling on Amazon, I could do a podcast teaching people or talk, talking about like, you know, <laughs> just what you're doing. So, uh, but I am like very open to trying new things and I definitely want to get more into like, yeah, teaching now, I think is like my next step. That's amazing. That's amazing that you're different, doing different things, not just doing hair braiding for clients, but also providing educational content and teaching others how to do the same thing and also selling um, some of the products you have. So that's amazing. Yeah, let's talk a little bit about the content creation side of every little strand because... Um, you do have uh, your clientele that you work with, but you're also, like you mentioned, um, providing like these tutorials, these educational tutorials on how how to do certain things, how to braid. I remember making that video with you and that was such a learning experience for me, actually, just learning certain terms and tools and techniques. And uh, that was actually super fun. So I wanted to ask, like, what got you? Um, I know you mentioned it briefly earlier, but like what sparked your interest and be like, oh, maybe I want to do a TikTok. Maybe I want to do like YouTube now to uh, create hair braiding videos. Um, first of all, thank you so much, Juan, for that video. 
That one is really good, and I'm so happy how many views it got. So thank you so much for that. Um, and now that I'm tackling doing like YouTube myself, I'm just like I appreciate so much of your work that you did on that. Cause now it's like a whole different ball game. You like, you know, to like edit and like learn. It's like video angling and like know how to film is like a whole different, you know, uh, like career. I feel like so. Like I just appreciate that so much, and like that's a whole different skill to learn. Um, but yeah, I think I I was already doing the social media, and I was like posting like hairstyles and stuff um, already. But I think like. To yeah, when I got into like TikTok, and now I'm trying to get into YouTube and just kind of like focus on that, um, teaching more because I get a lot of like messages. I think that's what it, why I kind of am trying to like be more specific with YouTubing because I got a lot of messages on like where am I getting my hair from? How do I do this? I want to learn this. I'm a mom from like. Uh, like, I don't even know, like Alaska or whatever. And like, I just wish you were close to me. I wish, you know, you could teach me or like, I, I can get it, go to someone like you. So if I could teach that to someone that's like, you know, wherever, I think that would be such a great skill for them. Like just creating value for someone on making other people feel beautiful or making themselves feel beautiful. I think that is such a beautiful thing. And, um, and if I can help in someone in any way, shape or form, like through just like a video, that would be amazing. That's, um, that's like my next goal for sure. Yeah. And would you say that, um, also thank you so much for, <laughs> thank you, thank you again for, uh, those kind words, um, because editing and creating, like you mentioned, creating a video is not an easy task, right? Like as, at least, um, at least if you're starting out too, just trying to learn the program, trying to learn how to shoot, how to, you know, how to make it as entertaining as possible for the audience, because that's something that hooks them. And, um, sure you can make a lot of very educational content but if it's not engaging if it's not if it doesn't spark an interest then they can they can they might as well just click away right which tends to happen a lot um but yeah i wanted to ask like is this is the content creation side of your business kind of helping as well as uh helping your clientele as well are you getting like certain um people to uh, discover your business through your content creation like through your tiktok etc so yeah, um, I definitely, I'm getting a different kind of audience that's just like wanting to learn more. And like, um, especially with like me, I'm posting a lot more with like the hair extensions, how I'm mixing the hair. And um, so it's a different type of audience than just like my clientele that I normally would do. So now I feel like I'm having like an, a certain audience that just wants to learn how to like do what I'm doing, how to like do the braids, how to make the extensions, how am I getting like the, you know, extent, like wherever, like whatever question that they have. Um, I think that's kind of what I want to focus more on. And is if I can teach in like um, a video form, with, whether it's like TikTok or like YouTube, that's kind of like, um, like I said, I, I I'm trying to focus more on that. Um, and yeah, with that type of audience now and th rather than just like my normal clientele. Absolutely. And I think that's fine, right? I think that's fine if you get like a lot of people from different parts of the world, like learn more about what you do and also your business. And, you know, they can share, uh, they can learn from your tips and maybe they can also share their tips, vice versa. Right. So, so that's amazing. Um, Given that you work on TikTok, YouTube, um, even Instagram, right? Or yeah, um, like what would you say are your favorite things about creating social content? Because I know that there some of the things you do are shorter, uh, like a couple seconds long. And then some some are full tutorials, actually, like 20 minutes or like 15 to 20 minutes long. So what would you say are your like favorite things that... Um, uh, favorite things about creating content for your business and for every little strand? Um, I would say the creativity aspect of it. Like you can literally like, make any type of video, um, whether it's me like, like I did a, a couple videos of me doing like ASMR of me making the hair extensions. And like that has been like, you know, actually really good and a lot of people really like just like the sounds of me making the hair and like the colors that come out of it so that's like 
one form, right? And then another one is like me doing like explaining like how to do the braiding and like actually teaching on like TikTok and stuff. Um, and you know, that's like another form of like creativity that I can do. And then like another one is just like me talking with just the client, another like type of ASMR, just me braiding the client's hair and just people's like reactions on like after they get their hair done is like another form of like creativity you get to see their expression and like how they feel after they get their hair done and um so i really appreciate that creativity aspect of content creating that's amazing and and now you have like so many followers and subscribers from different social media platforms that are actually watching your content. So uh, I wanted to also ask, um, what are some of the challenges um, that that you face while creating content? I know that you mentioned about like, oh, it takes so long to like, you know, pick a clip, pick which one's the best thing for an edit or or something like that, right? Because because there's so many steps that go along with creating content. It's not just creating a video or like recording yourself and posting. There's actually so many different things, right, uh, along the way. So I wanted to ask, like, what are some of the challenges as a content creator uh, that you're experiencing in uh, these videos? I'd say the number one challenge because my you know, business is on social media, I get stuck on social media. <laughs> I mean, I've, I've talked to you about that too before one, like where I got just so stuck with just like, uh, like I get stuck on like watching other people's like content and I like follow other braiders and I'm like, oh, maybe I should do it like them. And then like that affects me like mentally, like, okay, I got to do it like how they're doing it. And then it like messes up like my, like, my vibe of like whatever I was creating before. And then I just get so like uh, caught up with like social media with like oh, what other people are doing. And like, then it makes me feel like I, then I get stuck on it. It's just it's like a whole thing. And I try Now I'm trying my hardest not to go on social media as much. Unfortunately, because of what I do, I still have to go on it. But I literally, when I go on social media, I literally cool, like put my hand over my phone. So I don't even have to see. <laughs> So I don't have to see anybody's posts or like, you know, comments or whatever, because that really does affect me. And then I stick like stay on there for so long. And, um, you know, I don't want that to affect me anymore. So that would be like my number one, like <laughs> con of uh, social media and like having a business and like posting it on social media is like that's my biggest con. And then I would say like, also just the time, how time consuming it can be trying to figure out what my audience wants, what kind of audience I'm looking for. Cause I'm just like, I'm just trying to figure out who to target. So now I feel like I'm heading to the direction of just teaching now. Um, and that's kind of like where I want to be. Uh, but like I said, sometimes I get influenced by other people. <laughs> oh, and I see it on social media. So again, like I just try not to stay on social media as much. Yeah, I, I definitely agree with you completely uh, when you say that it definitely can be a distracting thing when it comes to, uh, I guess, mental, uh, your mental state too. Like whenever, for example, like whenever I um, look at one feed that's interesting and then just scroll up and then I just scroll up and I next thing you know, it's like two hours later, you're, you're still scrolling up and what have you achieved, right? Um, so... Um, definitely relatable to many people. And yes, uh, like you mentioned, we did have a conversation uh, about this, about uh, social media, because because is it a curse or is it a blessing? Because um, it could give you potential eyeballs on your business and actually um, spark interest on people to be like, oh, there's a hair braiding business that's happening uh, called um, Every Little Strand, right? Um, and um, And also your different content. But at the same time, it can be very addicting, like I mentioned. Uh, I mean, at least I, that's as far as my experience is concerned, like I'm from time to time still addicted. I know that many people are still addicted because it's so easy to do. Um, and I wanted to ask, like, what initially uh, sparked uh, something in you that said, oh, uh, maybe I got to stop, um, you know, scrolling too much. Maybe I'm gonna, just going to hide, hide the phone uh, away, put it away. But um, yeah, I wanted to ask your perspective on that. 
Yeah, I think like me comparing myself to others, like other hair braiders, for example, like, oh my God, they're so much better than me. Like, oh, like they're doing it so good. Like, look at uh, whatever it is. And then I just kind of like, it's like the con- consistently like comparing myself to other people or like, wow, they have, or someone else, like I see somebody else's life, like, wow, they're ha- they have such a like wonderful life. Like, look at my life. Like, I, even though my I, like, I'm very grateful and I'm so blessed to have like everything in my life. Like everything's great. I, I don't know why. Like, I'm just like, I find myself sometimes getting stuck on it, especially when you're alone in your room and then you're like, oh my God, like their life is so much better than mine and I'm like then I get like sad and then I'll like um like then I'll like literally go on a binge on social media just like hours especially on TikTok man that stuff is so funny I'm just like scrolling and like oh yeah so I think just so so much time has been wasted from that and me just feeling icky the ick you know what I'm saying and I just don't want to feel like that anymore and I, I hate the fact that like um, you know, what I do has to be with like social media. Um, cause like, uh, I get like so much eyes on it, you know? Um, mm-hmm. so I think now I'm just trying not to, like I said, I'm trying, I don't want to stay so long on social media. I'm literally covering my hand while, before I post, like, that's how serious, <laughs> serious I am, you know? Um, so that's kind of like where my, like my, where I, after that has been happening so often, I'm just like, okay, I, I can't like let myself go into like this dark hole. Like I just need to like, when you're like more present with like life, you know, you start becoming like that creativity starts flowing again. And like, once you're focusing on yourself and like um, your client and how you appreciate things more, <laughs> you know what I mean? So at least this is like my perspective. I'm sure other people like maybe don't feel the same way, but at least this is like how I feel. And I just don't like how it makes me feel. So I'm trying my, trying not to go on that route. Wow. Uh, I, I gotta say, thank you so much for sharing that. And, um, yeah, I am definitely guilty when I say that social media has been a, a blessing for me as far as like my career is concerned, having all these connections happening and also being able to provide, you know, a sense of positivity. But it can also be the other way. It can be like too much. It can affect my, you know, mental state. Sometimes, like you mentioned, um, I can, you know, have a tendency to compare myself to others. Oh, I wanted to be there. I'm not there. You know, like places uh, that people go to and I'm like, oh, no, I'm not there. You know, there's just little stuff like that 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 affects you. But I think that it's important um, to be yourself and just focus on um, being yourself and celebrate yourself. So um, I wanted to ask this question, too, because given that you're a business owner and content creator um, in today's age, do you think that it is a necessary tool to ensure that your business is successful or maybe you don't even need social media to, um, you know, help your business out. Because I know that, for example, like a lot of restaurants around, you know, they all have Yelp, they all have their Instagram to promote their thing, but some don't. Do you think that social media is is important in, in, uh, in terms of starting a business or not? Um, I don't think you need it. I don't think you need social media, but I'll say it definitely helps on like getting more clients for sure. Um, I'm sure if you have like a good network of like, you know, people, like if you're, if you're in a community and stuff, I'm sure you, you'll get some clientele, but if you want like a lot of people consistently, I think social media will help so much. Like people, that's not even in your area, for example, will discover you like, you know, they'll be like, Oh my God, I didn't even know you existed. You know how many times that has happened to me? I didn't even know you're in like so close to me. Like I like didn't even know this even existed. Some people don't know that braiding like exists like this, you know, I think it's also like very like known in like the African, African community, uh, African American community and more. And, um, but it's for braiding is for everyone. And I think like now it's starting to get into festivals and people want that for like traveling and like also just to feel beautiful. Like it's so beautiful to get your hair done. And like, even when I got, get my hair done too, with braiding, I feel so good and it lasts so long and you don't have to worry about it. And, um, I think it's like, what how it makes people feel is it's so 
beautiful and like you can just reach they like how you can like show that to so many people why wouldn't you want to show your business on in social media you know what i mean so yeah i think it's important to have social media for sure yeah just being able to spread that positive uh vibes spread positivity and also um being able to provide content that's relatable to a lot of people so i definitely agree with you on that although i think just don't do it too much. <laughs> I would say just don't uh, put on, uh, don't be on your phone too much if it's going to affect you is basically my perspective. And that's just my experience and uh, your experience, but other people are different, right? So um, this is just something we um, have in our minds. So I wanted to ask, like, uh, do you have any certain goals as far as your content creation is concerned, like your YouTube, TikTok, everything? Are you trying to get to a certain um, threshold or are you basically just creating content, uh, providing um, tutorials, uh, providing educational content? And hopefully, you know, someone can see it and be inspired. Uh, do you have any goals for your content creation? So it's funny that you ask. Honestly, I'm just figuring it out. I'm just going with the flow and I'm just seeing like what works, what doesn't work, what makes me feel good. I'm going with like the like my like a train or something like whatever goes in my direction. I'm kind of going with it. So like I feel like right now with my social media platform, I'm like I'm posting the extensions. Then on my YouTube, I'm like posting the tutorials on how to teach like teach people how to do hair. And then now I'm just like, okay, well, do I want to do this? So I'm kind of like in like, okay, what to focus on right now. So I'm kind of trying different things and seeing what it what makes me feel good or what I wanna like pursue. And um yeah, I I think like I said, I'm I, I think I'm like leaning towards just like the teaching route right now. And then also even because um, just like posting my braiding hairstyles as well, I think I'm just going to focus more on that right now. And I think that's amazing. Like even me, I'm still trying to figure things out, right? At, at least uh, as people, like things are constantly evolving. Things are, are constantly changing and um, people are always learning new things. So I would say never stop learning for sure. And given that, you know, this is something that um, you, I meant, I think you mentioned that you just started doing or start just started like creating content and editing and um, things like that. And yet you're getting so much traction. Right. So that's amazing. And I wanted to ask, like, what are what are some of the things that you think uh, are like very valuable lessons in creating content? Like, what are some of the things you learned, whether it's like through actually making it or just some of the skills like you've developed uh, over time? Um, I have learned that uh, quality versus quantity is huge. For the longest time, I'm I have been trying to post, post, post. Like I gotta post. I gotta I gotta like make sure everybody knows I still exist. You know, like that's like I, for a very long time. That's like my mentality. And then I kind of burn myself out when I do that. And then I just don't post for some time. And then I'm just like, oh my god, it's like a horrible cycle. At least this is what I my experience has been. And then I've just like realized it shouldn't have to be like this. It should be like one good video once in a while. And people really get so much value out of just that one video. They'll get more views on it. Like I, I really like learned that from like your bit <laughs> when you edited that video on YouTube. And I was like, oh my God, like, you know, this video is so like really like it, I was looking at the comments and a lot of people were like, Oh my God, I spent so much money on like breeding, uh, courses I spent and like your video on YouTube, it is free. And I just can't believe like I learned everything in just your video. And I'm just like, Oh my God, are you serious? Like, it just takes like, <laughs> like it means so much to me. And I just have like realized, okay, I gotta like stop trying so hard and like trying to post so much. Cause I think that's like what everyone thinks is like, you got to post consistently all the time. That is not the case. You want to post really good stuff that brings people a lot of value and just stick to that. And I, that's like more important to like my, my boyfriend, Glenn always like tells me like, okay, it does not about that. It just like post really good quality stuff. So people really like, you know, um, stays focused on your videos and people like really appreciate that more than just posting like mediocre stuff. You know what I mean? So now that if I have one thing to say, it would be just 
posting real, like really good quality uh, videos that is helping others for sure. Absolutely. I, I agree with that completely. And I think that people can wait for good quality um, content to come out rather than like if someone, let's say, like posts a bunch of like tens, hundreds of videos that um, people don't even look at, not necessarily because, um, you know, um, they're consistent or, or, or whatever the case may be, but because they're not um, they, they're not put together like really well they're they're not uh, thought out they're not um, you know you know what I mean um, but when quality content and quality videos come out then people will be like wow it was definitely worth the wait for sure so I definitely agree with you on that and um, yes thank you so much for providing all those and uh, it's great to to have you here and learning uh, so much from you I do have a couple of questions left regarding advice as you know like in the how it's also about giving advice to the listeners out there so the first one i have is do you have any advice for people who are addicted in social media like scrolling um so many hours uh in a given day and then they end up like not achieving a certain thing so do you have any words of advice for people who are addicted in social media um but actually want to stop So I will say for my personal experience, I've always said like, oh my God, like I'm going to quit social media. You know how many times I said that? And also like other people too, but a lot of people are not ready to do something like that. So I think like in your own time and like some, like in your own phase in life, your own journey and stuff, like one day when it comes, like feels good to you that you're like, okay, I am done. I'm sick of this stuff. I'm, I really hate how this makes me feel until that day comes where you come to the realization, like enough is enough. I'm going to put my foot down and I'm not doing this anymore. So until that day comes, then I would suggest like, you will find ways to like, stop yourself to like go on social media. Like I said, I'm literally putting my hand. I'm trying to like, honestly, I'm really not going on social media as much. I I have to go there just like to answer my clients and stuff like, or messages or uh, emails and things like that. But on social media, I literally don't go on like TikTok anymore because that is like danger zone. Like I literally <laughs> will not go. Like I really, I try to put my hand on my phone, like uh, on the, you know, on TikTok, on Instagram, and it really pulls me in. But um, now I'm just kind of like, um, I, I, I don't, I really don't want to. I really look forward to not being on my phone as much. Um, I like literally took out all those apps on my phone. Um, and just try to focus on like, now I just have like Spotify. So I'm like, hey. <laughs> I'm just like listening to podcasts and like listening to, um, music, you know, and then, um, and now I'm so much more present. So, um, I would say the first thing for sure is just like you, everybody has their own time. And like, if you want to, you will, you know what I mean? So, um, and you will find ways to stop yourself for sure. Would you say that you're a happier person now that you're um, not focusing so much on the social media, but just on your clients, right? Like, would you say that you're a happier person now that you basically stopped doing it? Definitely less stress <laughs> for me. Um, yeah, I definitely have like less stress because I'm not like looking at other people's stuff. Um, I, uh, I really am trying not to get into that world, but um happier it comes in waves for sure um i think in general i am like a happy person and um i try not to like you know the social media definitely helps a lot in like my stress levels and like i overthink i think i'm i hope i'm not the only one when i say this that i feel like sometimes oh my god i should have like so much money and i should have like a really good career and like i need to have a family and like you know uh and like kids, I'm late, I'm, you know, I'm late in the game. And like, um, this goes back to like the timeline stuff, like for example, like the social media, everybody has their own time. You got to focus on yourself and like, you just do your own thing. Right. And that will come in your own time. So I'm really like trying to reprogram my brain into stopping myself from like, like bad thoughts like that. Um, and social media definitely helps in like that 
aspect because I'll like look at other people like oh my god like they're doing all these things like oh my god I'm 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 not doing anything I blah, blah, blah. like I said so now that that's like taken out of that equation it helps so much to be more present and to really focus on yourself and like I you know definitely feel more calmer for sure that's amazing, Natalie. Thank you so much for sharing that. Uh, you just inspired me. Um, do you have any advice for people who want to start doing hair braiding as a career? Okay. Um, and I'm just trying to like put it into words. Um, so if you have, if you want to do hair braiding, go for it. Whoever, it, whoever you are, go for it. I think it's such a great like business to get into just because it's so niche and a lot of people don't even know it exists. You know, like I said before, uh, there's not that many hair. There is hair braiders in L.A., um, but there's still in the world. There's not that many hair braiders. And I feel like a lot of people don't even know um, what that is. So I think go for it. And like, if you really are determined enough, you'll find a way, by the way, there's a train. So sorry guys. Um, if you hear this really loud, <laughs> um, no um, but if you really want to, you can, and you will find ways like go on social media, go on. Um, like if you're, if it's like mentally healthy for you to do so, I will. <laughs> but, <laughs> uh, but like go on social media, start posting, see what other people are like posting for like hair braiding. Um, if this really gives you like pleasure to do something like this, I say, definitely do it. Go to your, you know, find communities, go on Facebook, go on, like, uh, talk to people. I, I remember when I first started, I was literally telling anyone I know, Hey, I'm a hair braider. If you ever want to get your hair done, please let me know. And I'm like a nobody, you know, but <laughs> to me i'll make a discount for you you know whatever you can um and if it makes you feel really good because i know it definitely some like just the aspect of just hair braiding being alone with the client and just really like you feel connected to the client and you feel very like you hear their stories and then like also it's like a form of meditation just like getting their hair done and like you're connecting with the client you know i learned for me as long as it's like calm setting and like um, slow. I really love, love that aspect of hair braiding. So if that's something you really like to do, go for it. Don't listen to what people say. Like I said, just focus on yourself. Listen to your heart. <laughs> Sounds so cheesy. Let's listen to what your body is telling you. If this makes you feel good and you feel like this is something you really want to pursue, I say, go for it. You know, you have nothing to lose. You know, you all, you have one life, live it and do it for sure. Wow. Amazing. Thank you, Natalie. Uh, you have one life. Do it. If you're interested in doing it, I think the first step um, is one of the most important things and just being able to consistently, consistently go and never give up. So thank you so much for sharing that. Um, do you have any words of advice uh, in terms of like the importance of also taking care of your hair? I know that you're in the hair industry. Um, you know, sometimes even me, like I don't even pay attention to my hair so much, but I feel like it's, you know, it, it's something that can be important. Right. So I, I was wondering, like, if you have any um, words of advice, like what are what is the importance of taking care of your hair as well? Um, get a silk pillowcase, everybody, whoever doesn't have one, um, get one. It's like amazing. Um, now for like taking care of your hair, especially if you have like hair, um, hair braids on your head, you want to make sure to like take care of it and like put like a silky scarf or like a do rag or some sort of like, mm -hmm. and those are all have they all have that silky material that will like keep the hair not frizzy when you wake up and it'll keep the style. Um, and this doesn't have to be just for hair braiding. This could be just like if you get like your, you know, you have curls or you want to you have straight hair and you just want to keep that style for a couple of days. Just put um, anything that's silky. And that's why I, I said in the beginning, like get a silky pillowcase because that will like definitely help your hair. Um, and also just don't be that stressed, you know, like that really does affect your head, you know, your hair. You're like a lot of people lose a lot of hair. They'll get a lot of gray hair just from stress. Life is stressful and like you got to take care of mental like it all goes back to yourself you know <laughs> so yeah that's my advice 
Absolutely. Natalie, I got to say, uh, I learned so much from you today and I hope that the listeners also learn about a lot about your insights as well. And uh, the final thing I have here is basically shout outs. Like where can people find you? I know we mentioned about social media, like a lot about social media, but like where can people reach out to you regarding your business? Like let's say they want to get their hair braided, uh, et cetera. Like where can people find you? Follow the plug is every little strand. <laughs> every little strand. Follow me on Instagram, TikTok, you know, um, and uh, YouTube, whatever social media I have. Well, uh, like at least the big platforms for sure. So follow me on that. I have like in my email, if you go on like my social media, like I have um, my Gmail. If you ever have any questions, if you want to get into it, please like DM me, message me. I would love to hear your guys' like feedback. Um, and, uh, yeah, that's, uh, that's how you guys can find me. Follow me. <laughs> Absolutely. Thank you so much. And those links will also be in the description. So I'll just get those from Natalie. Uh, I'll just get those from you later. Um, anything else uh, uh, you want to mention, like any products you're selling, etc. cetera? Um, also, like uh, when are you like open, like your, your business, right? Like when are you uh, open during the week? So I... Uh... Um, I am available anytime as long as like my clients are like available. I work with my client schedule. So as long as you message me, DM me, I like everybody finds me from like my social media platforms and then they just like, like I said, message me uh, or my email me. Um, and then like, like my close clientele, they have like my phone number. So that's how they contact me. But if you just like hit me with a message and they want to get their hair done, or if they want to find my uh, website, I have every little strand.com. I am selling like my hair products. Um, that's the custom made extensions. So if you guys are interested in that, go on my website. But if you want to get your hair done, if you're in the LA area, every little strand baby message me. <laughs> I'll make you like have an appointment. <laughs> and uh, yeah, that's pretty much it. Absolutely. Definitely reach out to Natalie, also known as Every Little Strand on different uh, platforms as well, if you have any questions and definitely uh, reach out and um, check out their website as well um, for more information. So Natalie, I got to say, this has been such an amazing episode. I learned so much from you and um, I can't wait for people to hear and I'm very appreciative and I can't wait to uh, hopefully work with you again. We'll see. <laughs> yeah. Oh, me and you, great team. <laughs>